Okay, so thank you for staying so long. <laughs> uh, I'll try, so okay. And of course, uh, I was wondering whether I would do one thing or two things, and I think I will do one and a half things. Uh, yeah, as you could guess. Okay, so uh, here I'm going to start again. So remember, we stopped at the Gene Teller theorem. The Gene Teller theorem was a theorem that was saying near a point, an almost minimal set of dimension two is in fact equivalent to uh, a cone. And the cone that you would take would be a blow up limit of the set at a point. And we want to do this at the boundary. We expect things to be a little bit more complicated. So it, it means that uh, we're only going to look at two dimensional sets in R3, say. Uh, it, it works, two dimensional sets in Rn, part of a program works as well. And uh, again, near a point of a boundary, and we try to essentially classify the singularities of a soap film at the boundary. That's what we try to do, okay? And I'm supposed to remind you a little bit of definitions. So the, uh, at some point of time, you have to tell me where I, I have to start. <laughs> uh, okay, I try here. So the definitions, uh, sliding almost minimal sets, so they're almost the same as for a minimal set. Host of measure of a competitor should never be much less than host of measure of a set itself. Here is the set, uh, F is the competitor. Uh -huh. Do you hear all those things or? I suppose even better than I, right? Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, right. And, oh uh, yeah, that's not so bad. Ah, that's bad. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so, so someone is playing games on me. So, uh, what was I saying? Uh, I was here, and uh, again, we're uh, interested in the regularity at a point. And sliding competitors is the same thing as we had before for plain uh, minimal sets, except that there is a deformation which is a one parameter family, and the important uh, properties of those things is that a point stays in the boundary when it starts in the boundary, okay? Right, so uh, all the theorems that I claimed I proved uh, this week are still true at the boundary if the boundary is nice, and in our case the boundary is going to be either a smooth surface or a smooth curve, and rapidly either a plane or uh, a line, okay? Uh, in particular, those, the, the sets are uniformly rectifiable uh, in the case we're talking about, uh, at least rectifiable, alpha regular, limiting theorems are true, and uh, the, and the, there is monotonicity for the density for balls that are centered on the boundary. Okay. Right. Uh, so this is what I call a, a dream of a, uh, Gene Taylor, right? We are picking a point. We try to uh, say what does the set look like near this point. The first thing we do is we look at blow up limits. Uh, they are supposed to be minimal cones. We study these minimal cones. Depending on the minimal cone, we expect to be able to prove some more regularity for the set. Okay. And when uh, d is equal to two, we can hope to find a list of minimal cones because at least. Uh, there is this description of the intersection with a sphere as a union of arcs of circles. Okay? Uh, let me, so in fact the program works uh, reasonably well in the setting that I describe here, which is uh, you start from the following thing. So you're in R3, uh, you're given surface, and let's say for instance the surface could be, you know, something like this. Okay. Um, okay, so the surface is the revolution thing that you can imagine. Okay. Uh, the set has to be contained in one of the connected components of a complement of a surface. So, for instance, inside the tube. Okay. And you would try to minimize. the surface measure of a set E, which is supposed to 
have a boundary along that thing. So the sliding boundary is this thing here, the surface. You are forced to stay on one side of a surface. Uh, for some reason, uh, the main reason being that it's easier to do the proof, and the other reason, which is that soap films apparently do this, uh, you consider that E contains gamma, okay? Uh, which is a way of saying that the, uh, the boundary is also wet, okay? Apparently it happens, so it's not so much a problem. And under all those constraints, you try to minimize area or something like this, okay? So that's, I think, the, uh, uh, the thing that I have up there. Uh, again, pick a point for a minimizer or an almost minimizer at the boundary. And you, the first thing you try to do is look at the lower limit of this situation. And you get something that looks like the wall is something like a plane. And it's strange because, of course, I expected to draw the plane horizontal and I'm forced to take it vertical, okay? Uh, and then you have to look at what is the blow up limit of E that can happen. And you know it has to be a minimal cone. Okay. okay, the minimal cone has to stay on one side of a plane. And there is essentially two. One is a plane perpendicular to this plane, this is minimal, okay? Union the plane because the set always contains the plane, okay? And the other new one is a set of type Y, which I'm not going to be able to draw correctly, uh, but imagine a set of type Y which is perpendicular to that plane and you stop here. So that's the list of two new uh, minimal cones. So that's what I have here, except that I forgot to remove half of the sets uh, in my description. Okay, so the minimal cones are known. There is another good news, is that the minimal cones, they are far away from each other, and they, don't, they are not tangent. They don't have a, a tangent piece compared to the boundary. And so in this case, what happens is that you get, in fact, you get a description of the minimal cones. Here it is. So here I'm describing the work of uh, uh, Xiang, uh, Yangxin Fang, okay? Uh, so first, a list of minimal cones. Not too shocking. You have to prove it, but it's not shocking. And once you know this, you can actually prove some sort of a Reifenberg theorem for the sets of that type, and you get that, the in, uh, that in fact, the minimal set that you were talking about here has to be a C1 version of a cone, which is there. Okay, that's in principle what I have to do. First, further, that's a first paper and a longer paper to make it C1, okay? And I, I claim that this was not uh, written yet. Once you know this, it's much easier to prove existence results. This is supposed to be the second part of a talk that will probably be cut, uh, uh, you know, half an hour from now, okay? So that's, that's supposed to be the nice situation. Finally, near the boundary, you get a C1 description of a set as being locally uh, one of those two cones plus small errors. And so a typical picture of this is the picture here, where in this case, the surface was the boundary of a tube. You had to lie at the exterior of a tube, okay? And locally, you can look like this. Uh, and okay, so you get here a set of type Y somewhere, okay? But, and so his theorem is essentially saying there's nothing worse than that. All right, that's the good case uh, here. We're now going to try to do the less easy case, which is when gamma is a line, okay? And again, we start the same program, and I first have to tell you what I think is the list of minimal cones of dimension two with a boundary which is given by a curve. There's a first observation is that all the cones that were plain minimal cones they stay minimal in this setting, because if you remember the definition of a minimal set, uh, all the allowed deformations have some property. Here, there is less allowed deformations because you also add the sliding boundary condition. 
Uh, therefore, uh, at the end, it is easier to be minimal in the plane category than in the sliding category. Okay. So all the cones that were minimal before, planes, uh, sets of type Y and T, they stay minimal here, no problem. And they don't even need the boundary. And then you have two new ones, the half plane bounded by the line, and you're not surprised. Okay. And the second one is a set of type V bounded by the line, so two half planes that make a large angle with each other. And again, you're not surprised. And remember, we did uh, in dimension one, I said this was one of the options. Here is exactly the same thing, except that you take the product by a line. Okay. So I guess it's clear what a set of type V is. Again, two half planes that look like this. No small angle, because you could do better by pinching uh, large angles. Okay. And I still mentioned below the fact that we have two special cases of plane minimal cones, which is the line that contains uh, the boundary, sorry, the plane that contains the line, okay, which has a special status because, uh, because we'll see. And the same thing, there is the set of type Y, uh, which is based on the line, and it also something special should happen there. Okay. Right. So this is the cones we are sure about. Then there is an another one which was suggested by uh, Xiang Yu uh, Liang, uh, which is the cone over the edges of a cube. On a previous lecture, I showed to you that it's not plain minimal because you can pinch the center. And now I'm going to prove you by image that it has a chance of being minimi, uh, minimal uh, with a sliding boundary condition. So that's the next slide. And then this will be the list of cones I sort of know. Okay, I suspect this one is minimal, but we cannot prove it. And uh, then there might be other ones. In higher dimensions, there, um, it's almost sure there are other ones. But let's just talk about dimension three. Uh, so my bet is that there is no other one, but I'm not sure about that. So this is the proof that uh, uh, Xiang Yu is right. Uh, so this is, you know, I mean, you recognize uh, the cone I was talking about. And SOAP apparently uh, thinks that it's also a minimal set with a sliding boundary condition. Okay? That's my proof. Okay? Uh, some of you are puzzled. So the sliding boundary is the diagonal, which it is strange because I don't recognize my picture. <laughs> what happened to my picture? So in principle, uh, there is a wire, which is the great diagonal. And for some strange reason, it disappeared from the picture, and I cannot tell you why. But anyway, so one of the great diagonals, oh, no, no, OK, it's the, other, it's the one that is uh, up there. So I mean, I, I thought it was a little strange that the pictures would just erase. So this is the sliding boundary, OK? And it goes along one of the singularities of a set. And because of it, uh, you know, if I try to pinch the way I used to, I would have to uh, near the center here. I would have to tear people away from the diagonal, which I'm not allowed to. And anyway, so that's the reason why this is minimal. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this um, like this. I think. I mean, essentially, the largest that I was able to construct and plunge into a limited quantity of soap, right? So that I could show <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> I mean, you need a basket. I mean, you see what I'm uh, saying. But the, you, you know, the construction is not impressive. Uh, whatever I've been doing with soap experiments, for everything, uh, whatever I would get was fairly stable, which means that you know, if I had been you know, if uh, my cube had been even worse, I would probably be seeing exactly the same thing. And, yeah. and my red wire is just because, yeah, I had some electric wire that I could use. But I've been trying other materials, like, you know, without the coating, it works the same. So, yeah. OK. Oh, no, I, and actually, you can have an idea of the size this used to, I think, contain ice cream. Does it make? <laughs> so it gives you exactly the size. Right? 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, right, so yeah, no, a, a true proof would be better, but uh, we don't have that, okay? Okay, so now what I'll try to do, so of course now we expect that things will be easier for simple cones and more complicated for more complicated cones. So I start with the good news. Uh, the good news is the simplest cone, which is the half plane, and I have a theorem here that looks a lot like the Gene Taylor theorem. So in principle, I'll not try to read it. It says that you have, it's even slightly better than the statement that I gave. If you have a minimal uh, or almost minimal set with sliding boundary a line, and it would work also with a curve, uh, provided it's smooth enough. If in the, in, uh, the unit ball or twice the unit ball, the set is close enough to a half plane, so it really looks like a half plane when I look at it, okay? And this will happen if you have a blow-up limit, which is like this at some small scales, then in fact, in the ball, it is exactly one of a half. Regular, no strange topology going on, no little holes in the set. Okay, a nice description of a set. I cannot hope for better. So that's uh, when you're close to half plane. Uh, again, the main story is uh, this. I didn't say uh, what are the ingredients for the Gene Taylor theorem, and the same ingredients here are used for this sort of theorems. It's always sort of the same. Uh, there is just one thing. The Gene Taylor theorem is essentially based uh, on the monotonicity formula. Uh, the way it works, extremely vaguely uh, speaking, is the following. You want to have a differential inequality that says that when the set is not so close to a cone, uh, then what happens is that its density decays at some speed. And then if you control the density, uh, things will get better at the end, okay? How do you prove this? At least how do you start? You say, okay, if the density is constant when the set is a cone, uh, if you find a competitor which is better than the cone over the intersection of a set wave thing, uh, then if you put it back in the estimate, you will get that the density is decaying at some speed. So in fact, the game consists for these theorems in proving that if the set is not looking enough like a cone, then the density decays, and the density decays because you find a better competitor than the cone. And usually the idea be, be behind finding a better competitor for the cone is that uh, a harmonic graph is often better than the graph of a cone. That's okay. And, and then you have some technicalities, but uh, yeah, no, you're not going to get the technicality. So here, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, sorry. So I usually say C1, and then I try to make efforts to say C1 alpha, uh, in most of the slides, and then what happens is that, yeah, so C1 is equal to C1 alpha for the rest of the lecture. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, and there is an additional thing which is a little bit unpleasant and will become more unpleasant later. The, you need to control also what happens on balls that are not centered on the boundary, on gamma. And for this, there is a different, I think there is a formula here there is a different function that is monotone, and we use that. So instead of uh, using the monotonicity only for ball centered at the boundary, we have to use some monotonicity of some function that we devise on, pur on purpose near the boundary, and it will show up later. Otherwise, it's more or less like the proof of gene Taylor theorem. And so this is the good case. Uh, case two, the simplest case afterwards is the case when it looks like a cone of type V. And again, we would like the set to look like a cone uh, of type V. And I think, okay, so let's forget about this comment here. So this is the picture that we expect, okay? And this is a picture that we get most of the time. And there is one case where you could expect something else. And here is the something else. And I'll tell you right away, uh, instead of pretending I, pretend I, I don't know where I'm going, uh, exactly what's the general case. So there is two types, I mean, there are three types of sets of type V. There is the plane, which is a set of type V, but very special, right? Okay. 
there is, uh, let's say something like, I'll, I'll just take a picture, uh, there's uh, this one, I will call it sharp. And there is this, uh, all the other ones which have angles between 120 degree angle and pi, uh, sorry, and 180, and I will call that generic. Okay, here is gamma, here is gamma. And here I made the picture in a, di a different way, okay? So let me back uh, up and go to this picture. Here is, uh, so sorry, L is the same as gamma. Uh, the set is this thing here. Uh, here you have a generic angle, and then when you have a generic angle, you, you get exactly the same sort of picture that I had before. And of course, as you expect, the angle can depend on the point and very sm slowly, but it still can vary. So maybe the angle here is a little larger than the angle there and so on and so forth. And then eventually you get a sharp angle of two pi over three at this point, okay? And then if the angle, if the thing is sharp, you are allowed to do something that you were not allowed to do, which is sort of leave the set in this way. So the main two folds go up along the set. Uh, there is a small thin face here which we'll say is vertical in the middle. And that's one of the things that can happen, right? You're sort of detaching the two things. Uh, okay, and uh, essentially I claim the theorem is that you can on only do this when the angle is sharp, before you first get sharp, and then you can lift, okay? So we have something like this, and maybe it's coming back here with a sharp angle here. Maybe again, there is a small piece here where the thing is generic, and then again, it's going to lift uh, like this, okay? And when it lifts, there is a singularity set of type Y along here, okay? Where you have three folds, right? The three faces, this one, the other one here, and the small vertical one here, okay? And that's what I claim is happening. In other words, this is really, this gives you the singularities in this case uh, with a C1 plus epsilon uh, uh, regularity, okay? So that's, that's what's happening. And again, the proof is more or less like Jean Taylor's theorem, so I'm not uh, going to see too much. So I think uh, all this description is just, in case I forgot how it worked, but I, then I could read it, uh, okay. There is still one case, sorry, so, woo. Uh, okay, where am I? Okay, right. Generic case is the picture that I was talking about. Uh, sharp case, then the, some curve can leave. Uh, in a plane, I have one last comment to make. Uh, and, oh sorry, and the comment uh, goes with the picture, so here's the picture. So uh, I said earlier that uh, plain minimal sets stay minimal whatever happens, okay? So in other words, if you take a set of type Y or a minimal set uh, locally, uh, and uh, you add uh, a, a boundary, I mean, sort of a needle through it, okay? If you do it carefully, the needle can go through the thing and it's not going to change anything. In other words, the set will still exist the way it was, and it's just that there is a needle that goes across. That's one of the options, okay? Uh, and there is another option that can happen in the case of a plane which is tangent to the line, which is that most of the time uh, the thing looks like a minimal surface, okay? And then along this piece here, where this is the intersection, this is contained in the intersection of the set and the line, okay? And again, the line is called L because I I mean, I took a picture from some other place. Uh, so along this thing here, you can have a V set which is very flat. It's the same story as before. Uh, the V set was infinitely flat at, I mean, was a uh, plane here. It's a plane here. In the middle, it can make a tiny crease. Okay. And again, this is the C1 description near a point where the tangent is a plane going through the line. Okay. So these were the examples uh, that we know how to treat. There are a few other ones, but okay, let's discuss it. So 
if you are slightly disturbed by this picture, but in principle it makes sense, you can also do a nice change of variables. A uh, very nice change of variables should not change so much the notion of almost minimal set. Get to this picture, okay? So this is the same picture after flattening the set. So now the set is a plane. The curve gamma becomes a curve which is slightly different. And what can happen is that the curve goes along the set from time to time and uh, maybe leaves the set a little bit and then goes away and then returns, okay? And I'm saying the position below is very clear. So this one is clearly minimal because a plane is minimal. And of course, if, if I fancy to take a sliding boundary, which is the curve that is here, it will stay minimal, so that's allowed, okay? So in other words, the, the picture below is clearly allowed. And I'm saying the general case is the picture above, which is essentially the image of a picture below by a nice mapping. That's one way to say it, okay? Right. Uh, on the previous slide, I had uh, mentioned that in some earlier paper, but I am not completely sure that we have the same definition of minimality. Bracke said that in fact, from a plane, you could leave the plane directly by going up. I claim not, uh, but I'm not completely sure that Bracke really meant this. And I hope I'm not wrong, <laughs> okay? <laughs> but uh, anyway, that's okay. Uh, this is the same picture about these sets, okay? So uh, here is the same picture that we had before, more or less. And I'm saying also you could see this as a small deformation of this picture, where this is clearly minimal because, uh, well, no, in this case, I don't say that it's clearly minimal because it depends on the boundary, uh, but uh, where you would have, you know, a V set and then the curve that is allowed to go along the boundary or not. But uh, in, I mean, in this case, it's not clear that the V is minimal because V is only minimal because there is a boundary. Okay. So this picture is, oh, okay. Uh, about the proof, I decided I'm not saying, I'm saying extremely little about the proof. It goes like the Ginger uh, theorem, which I did not reprove again. And there is just this slightly different function here that I use, which is monotone because the density is not monotone, okay? And I just show this to you on one example. Let's say that E is a half plane, and let's say that you pick a point, a center X, a little bit outside, uh, sorry, let me not be a little bit in the plane, but not on the boundary. And if you look at the usual density uh, on both centered like this, you have density pi up to here, then the density decreases. Eventually for extremely large balls, the density is pi over two. So it's not monotone in the right direction, right? And this functional in this case, you just add here the density of what I call the shade seen from X of the line. What is the shade uh, since x of this line? It's exactly the other upper half plane, okay? And so in this present case, you know, I just add this increasing quantity, which is just enough to compensate the trouble that I had here. So this functional is monotone. Uh, in this case, it's really doing what I want it to do because there is this case where it's constant, which is the case of a half plane. It works also uh, in the case of sets of type Y uh, that are placed in the right position. And afterwards it stops working and that's the reason why we'll have trouble soon, okay? But anyway, so that's, and otherwise you follow Gene Taylor's theorem, okay? I don't know if I should be happy that there is at least one extra monotonicity formula or if I should be unhappy because I don't have enough of them for completing the job. Okay. Now here is the bad case, and maybe don't read everything that's here. The bad case is the case uh, where uh, the tangent cone is a set of type Y with its uh, singular set equal to the line. Okay, horizontal. Okay, and in this case, what have happens is that well, what happens is that I have a conjecture, but I, I will give you a picture in one second. 
I cannot prove it, so I'm in trouble. And uh, the reason why uh, I cannot prove it is because this monotonicity formula that I introduced there essentially doesn't work in this case. I mean, it's, I mean, I've been adding too much. So for instance, in the case of the Y that I was talking about, the formula is not constant. It gives you this strictly monotone function that I cannot help, uh, that I cannot really use, okay? So that's, so anyway, this is, I claim the main case. Uh, probably along the slide, there is this fact that there are lots of other cases that I didn't mention, but this is really the one that causes, uh, that causes trouble for me, okay? And the reason why it causes trouble for me is that you expect points of type Y or maybe not along the whole boundary. For the other cones, you might have an isolated singularity, but nothing so bad, okay? Here is a vague idea of what my conjecture would be that I cannot prove, okay? So on top is uh, something which is clearly minimal, which is a set of type Y because it's plain minimal. And then I decided to draw a curve, uh, you know, in an annoying place, but maybe not completely related. So I decided to take a curve that goes along one face here, then along the uh, uh, center of uh, Y there, then along another face here, and then again here. And in this place here, it even goes away from the set Y because it's allowed to, okay? Right, and this, so the, the picture here is a minimal set. The picture down here, you can believe that it's going to be almost minimal, okay? Uh, it's the same picture except that I just straightened the curve and made, in, made it the line gamma. Otherwise, I essentially, you know, pushed things a little bit down. And I have a set like this, and I'm saying this should be the description of this type of singularity, except that I cannot prove it, okay? All right, okay. So it sort of makes sense, but uh, what happens is that if you try to do a proof, other possibilities appear, and I don't know how to rule them out, okay? And I think I don't want to say so much more about this. So again, the, this may look like, a, I mean, the, the, the picture here may look like a complicated picture. Yet you can give a description of it. You know, there is a curve. Along this curve, you have a singularity set of type Y. And then here, maybe there is a little hole, but it's okay because it's a smooth surface then and so on and so forth. It's a complicated description, but it's a complicated description, but it's a description. And anyway, the best way to understand this description is just to look up here and say, you know, the set was a Y distorted a little bit, okay? What's hard is to prove the theorem that I would want. Okay, so these are pictures of, it's the same pictures here. I've been cutting things into slides and I get all possible behaviors. And okay, this would be, so the other possible behaviors that would appear here. This is the typical thing that, a typical section that I have to rule out, but okay, I can't. Uh, and uh, other questions are, so let's say, I think I have a main other question here, which 